Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review, and in this review, we are looking at a watch by Nordgreen, and this is the Pioneer. Now, the Pioneer comes in a variety of flavors, but what we'll do is we'll have a look at which variety I chose. So, first of all, we have the Nordgreen box. Let's open it up, and here we have it. Ta ta! So, as you can see, we have the watch here. Uh, it's the gunmetal case on the brown leather strap, but additionally I asked to check out the rubber strap as well because I thought it looked pretty nice, um, so we'll have a look at that as well. Um, so strap goes in here, what have we got in here, a little instruction manual, uh, nothing too exciting really, but that goes in that little wallet that lives in the side here, and then we have our watch in question, let me just open it up. Nice bit of a, like a, a felty kind of a feel to it. So let's move the box out of the way. So pretty nice box, really. Uh, nice and compact as well, which is always good, I find. <clears throat> so here is the watch. As I mentioned before, uh, so this is the good metal version. It does come in either a rose gold or a steel version. And then additionally, you can choose from three different uh, dial colors as well. So this is obviously the white dial. And then there's a plethora of straps as well. So you do get a lot of options available. So you can pick and choose, you know, your ideal watch, which is, first of all, quite impressive. Um, there's, I, well, I don't know how many, I can't do the maths uh, on the top of my head, but you can get quite a decent array of uh, looks based on the different options available. Price then, $279, £215. As you can see, is what the Scandinavians do best. It's very stark, very crisp, very minimal, uh, very elegant as well. Nordgreen, a Danish brand uh, based in Copenhagen. Uh, so this is a really, really nice example of what the Scandinavians are so good at. Uh, so for the price, you know, it's reasonably well built as well. So we'll, we'll discuss it in closer detail as, uh, as, we, um, as we go through. Price-wise then, $279, £250, quite reasonable really. Uh, for the build quality, sapphire crystal obviously as well, and uh, Japanese quartz uh, movement, uh, chronograph movement. So I think price point, absolutely um, spot on, no complaints there, not too expensive or anything like that. I think what you're getting for the price is a, is a pretty solid watch. So what's the size? Let me pop it on. Let's have a think about the specs. So I've got approximately a seven inch wrist for reference, 42 mil diameter. It has a height of 12.4 mil and a lug to lug length of 46.2 mil. So it certainly is, you know, on the slightly larger side. Uh, I do like the fact that it's all dial as well. Very, very stark, you know, very, um, it really catches the eye, um, especially with the fact that it's so white with that massive rehout as well. Very small amount of uh, real estate around the outside of the case as well, you know, quite a thin bezel. So it really does create quite the impression uh, with this really, really classy, crisp uh, dial design. Uh, size, you know, the height's probably a little bit taller than you may want, uh, but from the from the rest of it, you know, it's, it's fairly, fairly decent, fairly comfortable as well. 75 grams is the weight, so nice and lightweight, very easy to wear all day long. Uh, five atmospheres or 50 meters is water resistance, so you are covered uh, a small amount, however, don't go swimming with it. <clears throat> Obviously, we have pushers uh, for the chronograph, and then it's a push-pull crown as well, so that doesn't help the uh, the water resistance. Uh, 20 mil lug width in case you do want to put your own strap on. However, as we'll uh, discuss later on, the straps are actually really, really good, so I personally don't believe you will need to swap the straps. Two-year warranty as well. Um, so that's a pretty good amount of time. And then finally, the movement. So they put a really generic, on the website, it's just called a Japanese quartz uh, chronograph, which doesn't help anyone. So I did a bit of digging. I thought, chances are it's probably a Miyota. So then I dug around the Miyota um, calibers, and I reckon it's the Miyota 6S21. Now, uh, they, can't, they haven't confirmed that, but judging by the layout of the dial, it's most likely that. So... We have our running seconds hand on the subdial at three. Our big seconds hand is our running chronograph uh, seconds. This uh, subdial at nine is the chronograph minute hand, and then we have a date uh, wheel, uh, date window as well, date function. So uh, all of these tell me that it's the uh, Miyota 6S21. Nothing too exciting to uh, discuss with that really. It's got a three year battery life 
and uh, behaves as you would expect for a quartz. So it should be pretty reliable, pretty sturdy, and even if it does break, you know, they're cheap as anything to, to replace and, and get fixed. So that's all the specs discussed. Let's have a think about uh, the watch, you know, aspect by aspect, starting off with the dial then. So I mentioned, you know, this is classic Scandinavian minimalist design previously, but I really, really like um, just the feel of it as well. Everything's so, yes, it is clean. Yes, it is stark, but there's something very friendly about it as well. Something quite, I want to say bulbous, quite uh, fluid, quite flowing about it. I really like the bevels used everywhere as well. Obviously the rehouts in itself is just one massive bevel, but also the bevels found in the subdials, uh, they're really nice, really genteel as well. And then the bevel around the um, date window is just really nicely done as well. It's very, very delicately done, but with purpose and it's just enough to make you look twice and think, yeah, that is really nice design. So I do like what they've done uh, with the design. You know, they've kept it as minimal as possible. I always say simple design is often the hardest type of design to do. They've done a good job here. They've done just enough to make it really, really interesting in the in the, um, uh, in the dial itself. Finishing wise, pretty much spotless. Uh, the print work uh, is really, really clean, really crisp as well. Uh, the hands as well. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. I do like how they don't have any counterweights, counterweights as well. They're literally from the from the pinion itself straight up. Uh, so that's that's nice design. Simple, but but I really like it. Got a tiny splash of red as well, thanks to the the smaller hands. I like how the the hands on the two subdials and also the main uh, the chronograph big seconds hand. I like how they're like a champagne-y kind of silvery color as well because they offset really gently, really nicely against the. Um, the white of the main dial. So good design. Another nice feature that I really dig is how the hour markers are inset into the um, rehout as well. But obviously we'll look at that in closer detail with the, with the macro lens. So nice, simple design. Let's just uh, have a look at the case now. So as I mentioned previously, this is the gunmetal. I really, really like how the, uh, you know, the, the coloring of the gunmetal gray, having a look at the general finish of the case. You can see there it's completely brushed, the case itself. Uh, very nice bulbous kind of shape to it as well as you can see. Uh, the the crystal, sapphire crystal is single dome so you do get a bit of distortion at tight angles. However it provides a really nice kind of fluid motion from the, the crystal all the way through to the, uh, to the rounded case as well. Looks quite nice and spindly. I like that style. Uh, makes it look like it's a tradi traditional kind of wire look, but in actual fact, it's not. It's, uh, it's, it is a traditional look. Uh, and if we move over this side, here we have the pushers. So nice, decent, solid click on those pushers. And if I just hit reset, there we go. And then finally our crown as well. As you can see, we have the Nord Green logo deeply engraved on the uh, the end of the crown there. And uh, in addition to that, we have nice, subtle little grip as well, which looks nice. And it's very easy to use as well. Moving on to the case back then. So the case back is steel. Um, quite, uh, you know, it look, it's quite simple, really, let's be honest. Interesting little like design uh, feature here, but all the information are very lightly laser etched on. So nothing too exciting or extravagant for the case back, but then again, you're never gonna see it, so that's not really the end of the world. Moving on to the straps then. So first of all, the leather strap, very, very supple, beautiful quality, um, really comfortable on as well, uh, easy to manipulate, so that's always good. So the standard Tang buckle has the Nord Green logo, very lightly uh, engraved on it, but that's also matching a, a gunmetal uh, finish to the, the case as well, so that's really nice uh, to look at. Just in general, the strap itself is lovely to wear uh, and it feels really good quality as well. As I mentioned previously, uh, I did also ask for the rubber strap and as you can see, we have the Nord Green logo very nicely sort of printed into the top section there. Nice and shapely as well. And we have our keeper loops. And finally, the same Tang buckle. Uh, and here's the other side. 
and this rubber strap is actually really 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 soft uh, usually with rubber straps you know they can be quite stiff quite uncomfortable to begin with but that isn't the case with this in fact i'm just going to put it on very quickly here we are so here is the watch with the rubber strap on and as you can see with the gunmetal gray it completely transforms the look of the watch uh, and i think that's a really good thing a really powerful kind of thing as well that just changing the strap completely alters uh, how a watch looks so if i just pop it on you'll see how just really nice and easy it is to put on it's so bendy you know i'm not making any effort there it's really smooth as well because sometimes these can be really sticky and quite hard to kind of slip through the keeper loops not the case here and uh, we've got the little nord green logo at the top just a simple little uh, design feature just really looks great feels really good on the wrist as well all right let's uh, check it out in closer detail with the macro lens on then starting off with the dial of course so here's one of the sub uh, sub dials you can see our very gentle rehalt uh, dip down into the sub dial moving over to the other side exactly the same if i start the chronograph going we'll be able to see these moving as it go so the main chronograph seconds hand you can see there are red tip ticking away as well this uh chronograph actually ticks at four times per second so it gives you that kind of faux feeling of a mechanical watch moving down here to the date uh, window you can see there nice little double beveled kind of inset introducing the date window really nicely there i really like that and then up here we have the clean crisp uh, print work for the logo very simple very minimal but i really really like it as i mentioned earlier here's the uh, the rehalt with those cool little uh, like oval shapes for the hour markers as you can see they're sort of raised from the rehalt very simple very subtle but I really like how simple and effective they are nice design Here you can see the uh, second the minute hand for the uh, chronograph okay moving on to the case as you can see there gunmetal finish completely brushed with a simple channel to uh, separate the bezel which looks good here's one of the lugs quite slim and slender flipping it over to our pushers see me use that quite simple easy to push as well and then moving on to our crown so here's the, the logo on the push pull crown and the grip as well very easy to use and a little space underneath for you to get your nail under to pull it out moving on to the case back as i mentioned earlier quite simple really nothing too exciting about it does the job light uh, laser engraving details and it's a polished steel case back as well so moving on to the strap, so I'll start off with the rubber strap just because that's what's uh, fitted to it at the moment. But as you can see there, very nice, simple, smooth finishing to it. If I flip it over, you see very gentle little indent, which keeps it nice and comfortable. Bit of air underneath your wrist. Obviously we have uh, quick release pins as well, so it's very nice and easy and simple to swap. And finally we have the Nord Green logo, quite deeply Sort of, it's not necessarily engraved, but you know, stamped into the top bar, top uh, section. And then here we have the Nord Green logo engraved on the uh, tang buckle there. And then finally, if we just check out the leather, so the leather strap has exactly the same buckle, but then we have our beautiful rustic oaky kind of deep oak colour, which I think will look even nicer with age matching brown stitching flipping it over nice soft underneath with the nord green logo stamped on the end of there and again quick release pins on that as well okay so then the nord green pioneer certainly does look the part i think from you know in terms of design it's really really nicely done very simple very modern very minimalist ticks all those kind of scandinavian uh boxes However, there's something different about it. I really like the fact that, first of all, it's just not another 
one of those same old, same old styles. There has, it has got something different about it. First of all, all the options is great. Uh, the dial options, the case options, so many straps as well. But also, just the general build quality is pretty much spot on. You know, I haven't really found any nagging issues at all. Uh, I haven't noticed any problems that might crop up either. It's just really solidly built. It's got a good, solid Miyota movement in it as well good spec sapphire crystal you know everything's just solid thick as well and the straps are just really good quality as well really lovely rubber like the softest rubber i've come across in a very very long time and the the leather again lovely quality very nice color as well just really solid really uh nothing nothing outrageous to complain about you know i haven't managed to find any fault uh at all really i just really like the design um and for the price, $279, £215, you can't knock it. So I have been thoroughly uh, impressed by the Nordgreen Pioneer. So uh, that's that. So thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.